For the Lord is good and he's worthy of all the praise. I see that you press your way through the fog tonight to give God some glory. Come on, put them hands together for Jesus. He is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. There's an old song, amen. And come on with me on today, amen. Hallelujah. On today. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless.
to give you honor in your house. God, we thank you because you are God. And there is no one like you. And God, before we ask you for anything on tonight, God, we ask that you will forgive us of sin and iniquity, oh God. Father, we're asking you now to come into your house. Father, you know the needs of your people who have gathered here on tonight. And God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're asking that you meet every need on tonight. God, you know what we need, whether it's sickness, oh God, in the body, a bad report. But God, we don't want to leave the way we came. In the name of Jesus, say that we serve you notice tonight that the Lord God rebuke you. We come in the name of Jesus. Forgive us the belongings of the faith. In spite of how it feels, God, we will bless the Lord. All my soul and all that's within me, I will bless him. I will bless him. Do we have any praise tonight? God, we thank you. Who tonight in the name of Jesus? From the pulpit of the Lord, Lord God, have your way, have your way. Send me an altar, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you now.
Anybody want to tell of his goodness? Hallelujah. We're going to pause with the songs of praise. If you have a testimony, pop up like popcorn. Amen. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll bring the mic to you.
for him to die. He had been off life support for 24 hours plus. When I first got there, everybody told me, where you take your Bible in there with you? And you, you, you take your Jesus clothes. You wear your Jesus clothes. I got on my Jesus clothes and be waking up at midnight. And I ain't got on nothing but my God. I call my Jesus clothes. Thank you. Because I ain't what the hour is. It has to do with the inner. And if you read it, it's going to come alive to you. All you got to do is want it. All you got to do, if you want Jesus, he is standing there waiting. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, praise.
think about his goodness and all that he's done for me. Deep down in my sanctified soul, I just have to throw my head back and shout, Today I can think because the blood is still running warm in my body. Amen. I'm going to share with you a few announcements. Uh, these announcements are specific to uh, Philippians for tonight. Uh, morning prayer Tuesday through Saturday. Correction Tuesday through Friday at 9 a.m. The teleconference number is 339-207-7634. On tomorrow, communion service will take place January 1st. All men are asked to wear your dark suits and women your white attire. We'll also be giving a first fruit offering for this year during the service on tomorrow. Give whatever God has purposed in your heart. First Friday teleconference will take place on this coming Friday. January the 6th at 7 p.m. The teleconference number is 339-207-7634. Our annual church anniversary will take place on Sunday, January the 8th. Each member is asked for a donation of $200 for support of the service. If you would like to get a copy of tonight's service, you can see our audio and visual committee, Elder Thomas or Elder Goosby. CDs are $8 and DVDs are $10. These are our announcements. Let's govern ourselves accordingly. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord is good and he's worthy yes. of all the praise on tonight. I don't know about you, but every time I turn around, the Lord keeps blessing. Anybody else? I know I got some old testimonies out there. But every time you turn around, the Lord keep on blessing. Oh, praise the name of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. I saw a thousand, he'll give you ten thousand. How many know if you give him ten thousand, he'll give you a hundred thousand? Can I get a witness here tonight? Uh, God has given all of us a measure of faith. What you say, sir? Oh, praise the Lord. He said, if I don't turn around, he's still blessing. At this time, we're coming to be a blessing to the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. If you can look on the screens tonight. Amen. Wax and fall of you to stand on tonight. I'm going to give you the envelope. I believe our worshipers can give you an envelope tonight. Hallelujah. God been too good to me. I know he's been too good to all of you on tonight. Somebody wish they could walk in your shoes tonight. But God has blessed you. Who oh, praise the name of the Lord on tonight. As I, as you look to the screens tonight, you can see where you can donate here. Click on the donate button to everyone that is on the live stream, even Facebook on tonight. Who oh, praise the name of the Lord. You can click on the live stream button. Visit our church app, Philippians Church of God in Christ. Select the Donate to Ministry button as a given. If you can't give from that point, you can also give by P.O. Box 8906, Columbus, Georgia, 31901. Please make all checks payable to Philippians, Church of God in Christ. Amen on tonight. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And to every one of you, I'm asking for every elder if you can. Preachers, pastors, you know what you, you need to give on tonight. But I'm asking for all elders, all past, all elders, if you can give a hundred dollars on tonight. Amen. On tonight. And to all of everybody else on tonight. You may give your best offer tonight. This is our last night. Amen. I'm gonna give a hundred dollars on tonight. For God is good and He's worthy of a praise on tonight. Hallelujah. Superintendent has given a thousand on tonight. Hallelujah on tonight. For the Lord is good and he's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. I want you to lift those seeds up in your hand, your right hand. 
because we want to get what God is what is writing out what's left. And repeat after me, but I but this I say, he was so sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. And he was so bound for me, shall reap also bound for me. Every man according to his purpose in his heart. So let him give. Not grudgingly or incessantly. For God loves a cheerful giver. This is 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7. Amen. I know that I have a pa pastor, Bruce, that you can come and bless the offering at this time, sir. Praise the Lord, saints. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for once again being in your house of prayer. And God, as we sit forth this seed, Lord God, we thank you because we know, God, it's only a small thing for us, God, to give back unto you because you have given us everything. Life, health, and strength. Thank you for allowing us, God, to pray for one another. For the love, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. We ask him for the pulpit to come first. And after that, I wash you from me and God. You from the rear. Start from the rear. Proceed to the front. Came out 
tonight how God protected us. Yeah. Yeah. And got us here safe. Yeah. I know he's going to take us back home safe. Yeah. And I just give on to the Spirit of God and to Jesus. And I thank and praise God by me. has brought us down to the last day of the year. I tell you what, I'm, I'm just glad I made it through the fog. <laughs> I, I've all my time being here in Columbus, 1971, I've never seen a fog like this. But you know what, sister, it didn't stop us. We ought to give them a break like this. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you on tonight. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. God, we thank you just for still being God. God, you're sitting on the throne, and we recognize that on tonight. And so, God, we give you all the praise and all the glory, oh God. In advance, God, even though the things we prayed for may have not even been given yet, oh God. 
We understand, oh God, that we're going to give you the praise, oh God. We're going to give you your worship, oh God. Now, God, as we step into this moment, oh God, of impartation of your spirit, God, put your word down in our hearts, oh God. Put your life down in us, oh God, so that we may live thereby, God, and grow thereby, God. Now, keep me, God, as I speak your word, oh God. Let your word smith, God. Only do what you've asked me to do, God. Let the people receive your word, God, in meekness and love, God. In Jesus' name, let the whole house say amen. Amen. And amen. You may take your seats. Amen. If my uncle, Superintendent Blandy, if you are out there, I'm going to need your help tonight, sir. Are you out there? Amen. Amen. Come on, I'm going to need your help tonight. I don't want to be up here all night long, and then I don't want to bore anybody, but I want to give you the word of God on tonight. Is that all right? Listen, right before we get started with the word of God, would you just do me one favor? Would you look at a neighbor real quick? Go ahead and find your neighbor. I'm just going to ask you a few times to look at that neighbor on tonight, and then I'll leave you alone. Look at your neighbor on tonight and tell them straight in their eyes, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm glad you said that. Now, if that neighbor didn't get happy for you, that's all right. You probably stopped by the wrong neighbor. So I'm going to give you another opportunity. Find you another neighbor. Let's find you a good neighbor that looks like they came to give God some praise on tonight. Find them because they probably already got a little sweat on their forehead on tonight. Find that neighbor for me real quick. Look at that neighbor and tell that neighbor, I'm blessed. Well, if you look at that neighbor and you're not See him get happy for you. That's not a problem. I don't think it's the neighbor. Now I think it's you. Because you ain't even said it the right way. This is your last opportunity. Find one more neighbor. You better find him right now. This time when you look at that neighbor, I need you to put a note in your throat and say neighbor. Look at him again and say neighbor. Stop you if you 
want to keep praying. So don't see it, don't preach my message. But if you want to go ahead and pray, give them about five more seconds. One, two, three, go. Something to us. 
Are you with me? Amen. But I want you to consider on tonight that the greatest experience that you will have in Revelation will not come from without, but rather it would come from within. As a matter of fact, if you examine yourself with optimism, if you examine yourself with optimism, you'll discover that many of your victories are connected to your vices. I hope somebody is listening to me on tonight. Many of your victories are connected to your vices. And not only that, but trials are connected to your triumphs. Are you with me? That's why you have to be careful as believers. Not to discredit all your mistakes and your failures, because sometimes what you're calling a failure is not really a failure. Uh-huh. It's God giving you an experience with him. Be careful how you discredit your mistakes and your failures, because sometimes it may be God giving you an experience with him. I need you to hear me on the night because there are levels to this experience. We have learned to expect God to be revealed to us, but I want you to know that God not always only uh, 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 is revealed to us. Sometimes he is revealed in you. Are you following me? I need you to hear me. It is much easier for God to be revealed to you uh, because when God is revealed to you, he'll use an outside source or an outside agent to reveal himself to you. Let me give you an example of that, please, so I can kind of clear up what I'm saying. God will allow you to observe somebody else's life as he guides them and takes them through trials and tribulations. And when he brings them out, that's God revealing himself to you. As you observe somebody else going through trials and tribulations, that's God revealing himself to you. But when God really grows you up, and when God really matures you in him, he is no longer limited to reveal himself to you. God is going to reveal himself in you. Are you following me on tonight? And this is the difference. When God is revealed in you, he's not going to use a burning bush this time to reveal himself to you. He's not going to use someone else's life to reveal himself to you. He's going to use your life to reveal himself in you. Are you following me on tonight? I don't know about y'all, but I would rather much know that God is a healer by him using somebody else's life to be afflicted. I don't know about y'all, but I would much rather know that God is a way out of no way by him using somebody else's life, not knowing how they're going to get through. I would rather much know that God is a provider by him showing me somebody else's life that doesn't have provisions. But I can tell you this, Columbus District, every now and then, God won't use your neighbor's life. Every now and then, he's not going to use your neighbor's life. He's going to reveal himself to you by using your life. Yes, yes, he sure will. He'll, he'll come right to your house. And the very trial that you thought you'd never experience, because you clapped your hands when you were in church. Uh-huh. You paid your tithes when you were in church. Uh, you were nice to your enemy. You were cooperative with the leader. Your thoughts and your behavior, this is what you thought. Because of your behavior, you thought that you would have an exemption from trial and tribulation. I need you to hear me on the night. Sometimes it is not God wanting to be revealed to you. It is God wanting to be revealed in you. And I got a question. 
for you on tonight. The way you shout and dance when God is revealed to you, can you handle when God is revealed in you? Don't worry, you'll get about it in just a minute. I just need you to think with me for a few more minutes uh, because understand when I tell you that Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that worketh within us. Are you following me? In other words, he wants us to be reminded that there is always a power working in you. <laughs> If you don't believe me, hear me when I tell you, God will allow pressures. God will allow pressures that will help you discover and depend on the power that is within you. God help me, I hope you are following me on today. Can I tell you that uh, there's a difference, there's a difference. Uh, uh, there's something that God will allow only to show you how to depend on what you already possess, that power that's within you. Let me give you an example. Have you ever observed anybody whose life seemed to be an uphill journey? And after observing them surviving challenge after challenge, you find yourself being impressed by them. And you thought to yourself, oh my God, she is so strong. Oh my God, he is so Determined, But can I tell you on tonight that the same way you discovered strength in them, God wants you to discover the same strength that is within you. Do you follow me on today? The writer in Romans, the 8th chapter at verse 20 says this. For the creation was subjected to futility. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. In other words, he's saying that every pain creation has to deal with, it is being dealt with because it is God that believes in the power that he's placed inside of you. Can somebody say amen? amen. There are some things you have to experience. I want you to hear me clearly. There are some things that you have to experience. I want you to hear me. I don't care how many hours a day you pray. All right. I don't care how many scriptures that you can quote. There are some challenges in this life that you cannot avoid. Why? Because those challenges are the recipe for what you pray for. Do you hear what I'm saying? Those challenges are the recipe for what you pray for. Am I talking to anybody in the room tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can recollect you asking God to use me. You remember that when you said, God, bless me. You remember when you said, God, elevate me. You remember when you said, God, please promote me. Do you remember that prayer? Do you remember when you prayed for your son or your daughter? And when you told God you wanted to anoint your son and use him in the kingdom. You had no idea that God would use jail as the curriculum to prepare your son for the ministry. I'm giving him my best shot, Superintendent. You have to be careful what you ask God for. This is nothing to be scared of. But you have to be serious about this thing. The old saints used to say, you don't pray with this. Or this is serious business. You have to be careful for what you ask for God to do in your life because you have no inkling of what he's going to use to prepare you for where you need to go. Now, not only that, but you have to understand this as well. Everything that you are going through uh, 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 is not about you. Uh, this is going to be a hard one to get. Everything that you're going through is not about you. We have to be careful when we say, Lord, have your way. 
Y'all know how we coaches do it. Have your way. Have your way. You remember singing that, that song right there? We know how to tear a church up. When we say, have your way. Oh, Lord, use me. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Can't that tear up a Pentecostal church like the yes, Lord, pray. But like I said before, it's easy to sing, have your way. But can you live through a have your way season? Can you live through a have your way season? Because every now and then, God will come into your peaceful life and turn it upside down. And it's not because of anything that you've done wrong or any misgiving that you've committed, but because you told God yes. And so when you told him yes, sometimes that will put you in the hospital room, not to punish you, but to place you. Not to punish you, but to place you. I need you to understand that there's a difference between punishment and placement. And if you're not spiritual, you'll look at your challenge as punishment. But I come to suggest to you tonight that what you have been going through is not punishment, but rather divine placement. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm divine place. Can I talk to some of the mothers in the room that's trying to figure out how you ended up in the detention center? Can I talk to some of those mothers? Yes, you taught Sunday school your whole life. You've been a part of the prayer ministry. You've been faithful to God and to the church. And you wonder how in the world did my son end up in trouble? And sometimes people will say, God, why are you punishing me? <laughs> Hear me, beloved, on tonight. He's not punishing you. Tell your neighbor he's not punishing you. He knew that you was going to be sitting in that waiting room and you was going to be sitting right beside a mother that did not know him. And he's going to give you an opportunity to witness to somebody else when you need witnessing to your own sinner. Am I preaching to anybody in hell tonight? Who has ever had the responsibility of encouraging somebody else when you yourself needed encouragement? This is why I want you to understand, beloved, I want you to understand uh, 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 Romans the 8th chapter at verse 20 explained it. For the creation was subjected to futility. And I just need to tell you that you have been subjected to this. Now I know that doesn't make a lot of people happy because we don't want to have any trials and tribulations. But look at your neighbor and say you were subjected to this. I need you to understand that there are some challenges we must experience. And the experience from the challenges is what you need to be who God has called you to be. Uh, let me say it again. I think I moved a little too fast on that one. There are some challenges that we must experience. And the experience from those challenges is going to be what you need to make you who God wants you to be. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why the psalmist says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And sometimes God will lead you into a battle with Goliath so that the experience will give you an expression. We need an expression. Let me give you an example. David's expression, his experience in Psalms 24, when he said, if it had not been. Y'all ready to go home and 
taught them five words. I'm going to keep trying to preach, though. David's expression in Psalm 24, when he said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Or let me say it a different way. Let me say it a different way. Now, now according to the original text, let's try to emphasize on the theological fullness of this verse. I'm going to give this one my best shot, too. For the original reads, if not the Lord had been on our side. Now, why is this important? It's important, but it's important because the phrase had not been is the past tense of Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And the phrase had not been means has been with us. In other words, it means not only was he with us then, he's still with us right now. Do me one more favor. Find your neighbor and just say, he's still with me right now. Oh, you need to say that with some conviction. Look at another neighbor and say, I know he's with me right now. See, it's easy to say that God is with us when we're on the mountaintop. And all of your bills are paid. But I need to talk to the saints on tonight. You are heavy burdened. And I need to tell you that he's still with you. I know it's only a few of us in here that might be heavy burdened sometimes. But God is still with us. In Ephesians 3 and 24, this reminds us that every problem working against us there is the power that's working on the inside of us. Are you starting to get what I'm saying now? And I need you to hear me on the night. It is the will of God to work through his children. It's the will of God to work through his children. And I can tell you without the word of God being hidden in your heart, God can be working on you and you're not having understanding of what he's trying to work out in you. Let me say it again. I think I ran past that one kind of fast. Without the word of God being hidden in your heart, God can be working on you and you're not having understanding of what he's trying to work out in you. Hear me on, uh, on tonight, beloved. It's not always God's will to bring you out of it. The enemy did not 
intended for you to survive 2022. But here you are, praising God and giving him a standing ovation. Because you know God has outdone himself. Yet again, you standing right here giving God some praise on the last day of 2022, knowing that God has brought you. And some of us know that that wasn't because of our skills. Some of us know that that wasn't because of our degrees. Some of us just know it was playing out God's favor. You got God's favor on your life. And the fact that you believe you have God's favor on your life, it causes me to believe that the same hand of God that's on your life can be the same hand of God on my life. Do you believe that on today? If you show me a believer that's going through challenges and trials, I'll show you a believer that is having an encounter with God. Do you know anybody like that? Lord, I tell you, help me tonight. Uh, uh, what you got to do now is manage while you're under pressure. Look at somebody and say, manage while you're under pressure. Don't lose your focus. That's the reason the Apostle Paul said that we should not grow weary in well doing. That's the reason why he made that statement. Because let me tell you why. You can be saved for 20 years and still be vulnerable to getting tired and weary. Now, I know ain't nobody going to be honest tonight, so I'm going to put myself out here because y'all got your pastor here. I know you ain't going to be able to follow me on this part right here. But I know sometimes you get tired and weary and you don't feel like singing a song or hearing no sermon. I know you get tired and weary and don't feel like praising God. I know you get tired and weary and be so frustrated that you don't want to speak in tongues, but you want to cuss in English. But do you not know that because you resisted the enemy and you held on, I need to tell you all tonight that God got a blessing for you. And he's got your name on it. Just look at the name and say, God got a blessing for me. And it's got my name on it. Listen, you got to get excited about your faith. You got to get excited about your discipline. You know, we only we only know how to shout and dance when when we step out of a trial. And that's why sometimes praise breaks only break out sporadically in the church. Because those who are shouting and dancing are the ones who came out already. Uh, but if I could, I want to invite those tonight that are still going through. Uh, you don't have to wait until the change comes uh, because you're not shouting out of destiny. You're shouting out of discipline. You're shouting out of discipline. Look at somebody and say, I don't even have it yet. I don't even have a car that's nice to ride, but I know I didn't lose my mind. I'm still wearing the same clothes. I'm trying to make ends meet on the same salary. I ain't got no new car to shout about, but on tonight, I'm going to dance a little while, because after all that I've been through, look at somebody and say, I still Because that was a time, brother, that I would have came and resigned my position and left the whole church. That was a time that I would have got into a season that I didn't want to do this anymore. 
but because of God's grace, I know that he's going to work it out on top for me. And not only that, I know that he'll work it out for you on tonight if you can just give God some praise. I need somebody to testify with me tonight. God is changing me. Can you testify to that tonight? Tell your neighbor, God is changing me. And I like it. Listen to me. You never would have known what you could handle uh -huh. until you had to handle it. You never knew how much you could carry yes. until you had to carry it. God told me to tell somebody who's been carrying so much uh -huh. and burdened down. This is a word directly from God right now. Payday is on the way. Thank you, God. Payday is on the way. Listen, let me tell you this, and I'm going to turn you loose. The apostles just had to say it like this. I count it all joy. That's what they said about it. My challenges, my trials, and my tribulations, uh, I count it all joy. And when you count it all joy, you begin to move from hurting to hoping. When you count it all joy, you move from hurting to hoping. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is through this time is God is preparing you for a season that you know not of. Hurt addresses the problem of right now. But hope announces the promise of tomorrow. And it's a monumental importance that you know on tonight you need to have some challenges and experience during this Christian walk. Because the experience is going to give you a revelation. And when you get that revelation, then you are authorized to operate in demonstrations. When you get your revelation, then you are authorized to operate in life demonstration. I just need somebody on tonight to maintain your hope in God. Can you tell your neighbor, hold on. Just a little while longer. I need you to grab this on tonight. On the last day of 2022. That everything that comes against you. Is God trying to reveal himself. In you. He's trying to reveal. Through your life. That he's a healer. He's trying to reveal through your life that he's a deliverer. He's trying to reveal through your life that he's a way maker. He's doing all of this to give you a test testimony. And y'all know the power of a testimony, don't you? It's twofold. The power of a testimony. One, it encourages those who came. Do you hear what I'm saying? A testimony encourages those other ones who came. You know why? Because it's so easy sometimes to only think things are happening to us. It's so easy to look around the room and say, you got on some nice suits. And you got on some nice shoes. And, and we got the beautiful hats in Church of God in Christ. So it's so easy to look and say, everybody else is doing good except me. That's why I thank God for the testimony service. Because some people who know how to testify are going to give God the praise after they say what he brought them through. Do you hear me? The other reason that testimony is important because it's encouraging yourself. Do you hear what I'm saying? You better work on your testimony you better start working on your testimony. 
you better start sharing your testimony. Yes, you got a whole new year to get ready to put it to use. Yes, Listen, I'm almost finished, but the Bible declares that the whole earth groans and waits for the revelation of the sons of God. What you need to know on tonight is that somebody is watching your life. Somebody is watching your experience. Somebody is watching your divorce. Somebody is watching your foreclosure. But they watched you all this time go through hell. But then they watched you show up to church and still give God his due praise because you gave somebody else a good example of what happens when you hold on to God and his unchanging hand. Is anybody holding on tonight to God's unchanging hand? Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm so glad that you held on. Tell another neighbor, amen, I'm going to leave you alone, that I'm so glad you held on. Because it was me watching you hold on that gave me strength to continue this walk. It was watching you that gave me encourage to keep going on. And because you held on, I can do my keep on. Because you held on, I can now do my keep on. Listen, I know some people may not think they even have a future on tonight. You've been thinking, I don't even have no anointing on tonight. But because of your burdens and your fighting that you've had to care, the Bible says you've been subjected to this. You've been subjected to this. Anybody ever cried out to God and say, God, why? Why me? Why do I have to go through? Why do I have to suffer? God, why do I have to always struggle? But I came by to tell you on tonight that Romans, the eighth chapter, the Bible says that God had to put you through it. Look at your neighbor and tell him I had to go through it. Come here, Daniel. Help me with this message and tell everybody how you had to go through the lion's den. Come here, Joseph, and tell us how you had to be put in the pit. So don't be perplexed, people of God. Don't be perplexed about why you have to go through what you have to go through. It's all so that you can come out with a testimony. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, the song said, where would I be? If it had not been for the Lord on my side. And if I remember correctly, there's a scripture that says this. Don't be surprised that you're experiencing the fiery trials of life. <laughs> Don't let it catch you off, Lord. Take it not strange that you're going to experience the fiery trials of life. It's going to happen. You've got to hold on. Beloved, if you get to a point where you can't hold on, you better call another believer. You don't have to struggle by yourself. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
And just because we wear the collar and we're preachers and we're ministers and we're evangelists, uh, that does not mean that we don't have to call on somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're human too. Yes, sir. Thinking not strange. Uh -huh. When you are experiencing this life, God has given you a power. The Holy Ghost power. Yes, that's down on the inside. Yes. And God believes in you. Yes. That you're going to access. Yes. The Holy Spirit. Then he said I need you. A comforter. Yes. That's what he said about the Holy Spirit. Yes. He's still here with us to help us get through. I want to pray for somebody real quick on tonight. I'm finished preaching. Could you stand to your feet? God, on this year, is not going to reveal himself to you because you've grown up. He's going to reveal himself in you. For the sake of someone that doesn't know him. But he's preparing you right now. For that season. That you will stand strong. That you will endure and run this race. To the end. I want to pray for you right now. God we thank you on tonight. God your word has been spoken to your people. God, your spirit has fallen on this place. God, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that is experiencing the challenges, and it seems like those challenges is getting the best of them, God. God, I ask you right now, God, to step in, oh God, and be there with them, God. Send them some peace. Oh God, to their troubled mind, God. Send them comfort, oh God, to their broken hearts. God, you see us. You made us, and you know all about us. And the work that you started in us, God, your word tells us that you're going to see it through to completion. So God, if anybody is thinking about giving up right now, if anybody is thinking about walking away from the ministry right now, if anybody is thinking about leaving the evangelism department, if anybody is thinking about leaving the prayer and Bible land, God, I ask right now, heaven God, you step in and help them. And God, I just don't talk about your people right here. I'm talking about myself, God. I need your help, God. Right here, right now. Right here, and right now. We know that you're able. We know that you can do it. And God, we give you thanks. Even right now, we're starting to clap our hands. Because you're going to release in this place, the miracles that you have um, in store for us. You're going to release right now, oh God, all the chains that's been breaking off of us, oh God. God, right now, you're going to release your spirit amongst your people, oh God. These are all the things that we know you're going to do already, oh God. So we praise you and we give you thanks in advance. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Say it again for real. In Jesus' name. Let the whole house say amen. Amen. And amen. You may have your seat. God bless each and every one of you on tonight. I gave it my best shot, brother Will. My prayer is that God touched your hearts. My prayer is that you got your shout in. My prayer is that you received exactly what you came here for. Did anybody receive anything on tonight? 
Amen. 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 I just want to say before I take my seat that I am honored, Superintendent Duckworth, that you chose a, a loudmouth joker like me. <laughs> To bring the word, the word on tonight, I consider myself the least of all of these great men in the house. I know I'm the youngest, and I think I'm the prettiest. <laughs> That's just a joke. That, but, yeah. <laughs> Superintendent Duckworth says, speak for your wife. <laughs> God bless you, and Elder Tim loves you. 